Reach, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more savvy episodes and savvy biz tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com. Hi, Anthony Annarino. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting Life Unscripted. I'm so grateful to have you here today. I'm grateful to have you talk about a topic we get um, asked to talk about a lot because as many business owners who listen in are new or maybe out there for a while, but listen, um, wanting to up their gain and grow their business, one of the biggest skills that is very important to sales and to life is sales. And you know that better than anyone. You've been doing it for many, many years and have a very successful business. Um but I want us, before we get started and talking about all that jazz and leading to growth and the proven formula for consistency to increasing revenue, all that good jazz, first talk about how you even came into the life and uh, universe of sales. How did that happen for you? Reluctantly. Uh, <laughs> reluctantly is the right way to say it. Um, I left a job washing dishes uh, where I had worked at a an Italian banquet center for two years, washing dishes from 13 till I was 15. Wow. And then at 15, I got a job making cold calls for muscular dystrophy. Hmm. And my job was to get people to do a bike-a-thon. And uh, of all the people that worked there, there were a lot of us. I was the only person that got any bike-a-thons. I got two. And then I got a job at a skating rink and I quit because uh -huh. there were girls my age uh, at that time. And that was a lot more interesting than cold calls. Uh, <laughs> A couple of years later, I started um, working in my family's business. My mom's an entrepreneur, and she started a staffing company. And uh, I was in charge of light industrial staffing. And I was told to make cold calls when I did that. And mm -hmm. if, it's like, if there's nobody to interview, call people and see if they need some help. And I didn't mm -hmm. know I was selling anything. I thought, like, I'm supposed to be helping them. So that was my my first reaction was, oh, they need help. I should call them. So t tell me, can we stop right there? Because you said something very important. Uh, you didn't know you were selling. You were just there to help. So when your parents said, reach out to these people, what did it look like when you called them to reach out? Oh, do you, how can I help you? Or how did that go? No, the first call went like this. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, my name's Anthony Anarino. I'm with Solution Staffing. And I'm calling you today to ask you for a meeting where I can tell you a little bit about our company and learn a little bit about you. Mm -hmm. And because I was reading it off an index card, the first person I called said, uh, call me when you don't need a script anymore. And he hung up on me. Wow. And I called my mom and, uh, and her partner. And I said, uh, this guy just hung up on me. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> and they said, call him back and tell him you don't need the script. <laughs> and I thought, well, he just hung up on my face. Like, I wanted, <laughs> I'm going to call him right back. And they said, yeah, call him right back. So I called him right back and said, listen, I don't, I don't need a script. It's mm -hmm. my first day on the job but I do need a meeting with you because I think I can help you get the people that you need. And he said, okay, come out on Thursday. And, uh, wow. and I went out on Thursday and I got, I had to get a little help to win that deal because I had no idea what I was doing or what we were talking about at all. Yeah. But I did, I had somebody come with me and I, I won that deal and I, mm. I wasn't really ever afraid of making cold calls, even though some people hang up on you. Mm. Some people are grouchy right mm. now. People are really grouchy. Have you noticed that? Mm. Tell me, I, 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 even when I call for help on a particular account, AKA my account, I'm getting people who are a little gripey on the phone. And I think it's the difficult, I think the uncertainty of the times. Well, that plus you have a, a global pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, high inflation, like mm -hmm. the list is very long, right? So yeah. if people are a little grouchy, you understand why. Yeah. Um, I played rock and roll from 15 till I was 26. And when I I decided to move to L.A. when I was about 20, 21, mm -hmm. and uh, I went out there to front a hair metal band. I know it's uh, hard to believe right now, but I did have hair to my waist at that particular oh time. My God. <laughs> and I got a job at another staffing company, a, a giant one, a $4 billion company. And I got a new manager. Mm -hmm. And one day he came over to me and he put down a report in front of me and he said, whose clients are these? And I looked at him and I said, those are all my clients. Mm -hmm. And he said, how did you, not me, like this is me with 21 with long hair and a suit on. He said, how did you win these accounts? 
And I said, it's really kind of easy. You know, I know where people worked because they put it on their application and I call those companies and I ask them if I can come and see them. And some of them say yes. And then I ask them what kind of help they need and they sign a contract and they become my clients. Mm. And he said, great, here's what I want you to do. Cut your hair and go into full-time outside sales. Uh, those are the words that he said. What I heard though was, become an ax murderer and go on a killing spree in Los Angeles area because I had no interest. I'm like, I'm not smarmy. I'm not pushy. I like people. I'm never going to do anything <laughs> like that. And, uh, and he said, uh, you'll come in with your haircut. It, you mm -hmm. don't have to cut it all the way off. You can still have a ponytail. It's Los Angeles after all. Yeah. And if you don't, I'm going to send you back to Columbus, Ohio. Mm. So I went into sales. I became the worst salesperson you've ever met because instead of helping people, now I was supposed to be doing something to them. I'm supposed to be selling them mm -hmm. instead of helping them. And I eventually had my boss go on a call with me and uh, he said, you should be brought up on charges for cruel and unusual punishment you read her the whole pamphlet that we carry around with us and she's in a catatonic state and will probably never revive her. And, and he said, come with me. And I, I watched, he didn't say very much. He's a very mm. good listener, mm. but when he did say something, he had really good language. The way that you look at production and staffing is the hours. So when we got Maury, we had 200,000 hours a year later, we had 22,000 hours. Uh, mm -hmm. in a year. And we did that by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I won the largest account on this Western half of the United States. It was about a $50 million deal. I needed a lot of help to win that one because I was still like 24 years old. Yeah, And I didn't get any money because um, I had a grand mal seizure Shh. and uh, I was taken to um, UCLA I had what's called an arterial venous malformation, which is a big group of arteries and veins that grew into a knot. And I had it right here on mm. my head. And uh, I went back to Columbus, Ohio, and I had two surgeries, one where they glued the arteries and veins shut, and then one to remove the bruised part of my brain. After that, I went to college after I tried to drop out of high school every day. I never wanted to be at high school, but college was great. Mm. I was 26 when I started. Then I went to law school. I, I'm not a lawyer, but I did go through all three years and I've got my JD. Awesome. And a little bit after that, I went to Harvard Business School for their OPM. That's their, their what I guess you would call their master class for um, entrepreneurs. Hmm. And, and from there, I grew the business. From the time I came back, it was a $3 million business and I grew it to $50 million with four salespeople. Wow. So can I back up a little bit? So sure. here you are, you had this grand mal seizure, you end up in the hospital. I'm. It sounds like that was a pivotal moment for like, I'm going to change up my life. I'm going back to college. What was happening in your in your head at that time, uh, in your spirit? What, what put you and prompted you on that path towards I'm going to open a business and, and train salespeople and all that stuff? Well, that didn't happen until later. Um, mm -hmm. At some point when my business was really successful, people started asking me, can you tell us how to do this? Like, can you tell us how to grow our revenue? Mm. And, uh, and I could. And, and so I started to do that. And then in 2009, on December 28th, I decided to write a blog every day. And now it's been 13 years that I've done that. I write a thousand words a day every morning at four o'clock. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will continue to do that, including uh, Christmas and New Year's and every other day I write when I get up and um, people started to pay attention to me. Then I got a book deal. I wrote a book called The Only Sales Guide You'll Ever Need. Mm. Terrible first title when you have a three book deal and you're going to have two more sales books immediately after that. Mm. The second one's called The Lost Art of Closing and then Eat Their Lunch and mm. then Elite Sales Strategies. And then my first book for managers is leading growth because they need as much help as their team does. Wow. And it's true. I don't think a lot of managers understand what does a manager really do? What is the essence of what you're supposed to do? Is it, am I just telling people to do stuff or there's something more than that? But I find that you're actually kind of the bridge for all your people. Absolutely. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, in, in leading growth, the first chapter is vision. Like you, you have to let them see something and then understand it and commit to it. And mm-hmm. th- those are big things that leaders do. Yeah. It's not only telling them what to do, even though I do think that that is part of leadership. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. there's more to it. You have to develop them. You know, you have to help them. You've got to teach and train them. I mean, all of those things. Mm-hmm. I mean, every great leader mm-hmm. will say the same thing over and over again until their team believes that it's true. And yeah. if you say it once, you can expect absolutely nothing to happen. And the math that I come up with is if you say something a million times, like three people will do something <laughs> and, and the other nine won't. <laughs> and yeah. it just takes a long time before they believe your vision. Yeah. And uh, you have to work really, really hard to communicate uh, very well over a long period of time if you want your goals. Yeah, yeah. And and also having that confidence and and strong clarity of your own vision for yourself before you can implement it to others. I, I had an amazing uh, boss many years ago who were able, I felt like he was always testing us. He put us on a quota. I, I worked um, and still do in the um, account receivable arena. And it's always like, how much money can you bring in? Kind of like with sales, you know, you got to meet that quota. And no matter what quota I reach, he was like, push, like get to the next quota, next quota. But my idea like yours is like, I don't want to hunt people down for money. I want to help them create a solution to if they can't pay a certain thing, which they agree to, how do we find a solution for that? Not just like beat them over the head, give me the money type of thing. Well, then you are definitely in sales. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. So now let's go to this because leading growth, um, there are a lot of people feeling like, what's wrong here? I have my business. I at first did really well the first couple of years, but I can't seem to increase my revenue. And I'm thinking because they haven't found a way probably to tie what they're bringing to the marketplace as a way to help people or bring their the needs being met to the client or maybe even met the, the clients who they're meant to help. What's your solution on how they can better find a way to help people? The the first thing is if you're going to scale up, mm-hmm. you need to find a sales approach that you can teach to other people so that they can go out and create value for that person in the conversation. And if they don't create value, if it's just a pitch, like we have this mm-hmm. product that's great, it's better than everybody else, mm-hmm. you can trust us, uh, you're not going to do very well. What people need right now is they need somebody to help them with the uncertainty, They need Mm -hmm. someone that can explain why they have the problems that they have, Mm -hmm. what they need to do about those, what kind of help they're going to need to do those things so that they can get better results. Mm -hmm. And the the way that we describe this kind of a salesperson is we call them one up. So one up means I know something that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And if I were to convey what I know, my experience to you, you would be able to make a better decision for your business and you'd be Mm -hmm. able to get those better results. So the first thing is, is you need a sales approach that is what we call insight based. Like Mm -hmm. I can teach you things that you don't know that would help you. And then the second thing is you need a salesperson who can grow up to be an expert and an authority. And the way that we try to help people understand this is imagine what a consultant does. Mm -hmm. A consultant from McKinsey doesn't sit down and say, oh, I work for McKinsey. We're this big. We have these many clients. They don't have that approach. They start right away with tell me what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then they start explaining to you why it's going on. And that's what you expect. You expect counsel, advice, and recommendations. Mm -hmm. So that's what you need to be able to succeed in sales today. And there's a lot of ways that you can get help doing this. There's a lot of people that already know how to do these things. But the most important thing is to build a little team if you want to get good results and then really develop them. I mean, make sure that they get good training, great coaching, that they've got good talk tracks, Mm -hmm. that they are able to create value for a client, which basically means educating the client. I mean, when Mm -hmm. we say that, that's mostly what we mean. Mm -hmm. And once you've got that in place, just managing that team Mm -hmm. is is what you need to get started. And I I said earlier, I I went from 3 million to 50 million with four salespeople. So you don't need a giant team. Mm -hmm. You just need a really good, effective team. And so that team in the staffing company, uh, they're all mature and they win between 85 and 95% of every deal we go after. That's amazing. And that, that's the way that you do it is you get effective and you don't worry so much about more, you worry mm-hmm. about better. 
Now, um, tell me, how important is it? Because a lot of new business owners getting started, they had an idea for product service or information because it's something that's their jam. And just because it's their jam doesn't mean they know how to go out there and present it in the way or or do effective sales. Um, so how important is it that they build their sales skills before they bring other salespeople on? Or could they just negate that and just get expert salespeople? I'm thinking you have to have a pretty g- good idea of what sales encompasses so you get the right people. Yeah. And part of this is the way that the world has changed in sales is Mm -hmm. we used to start by saying, why us? Let me tell you about my company. Let me tell you about our clients. Let me tell you our products. Nobody cares. (laughs) Everybody's got a good company. They have all got a good product. Uh Now what you have to start with is uh, why should I change what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the first question. So you have to start answering that. And one of the ways that we solve that is with an executive briefing. So Mm -hmm. we show up and say, these are the forces and the factors that are going to have an impact on your business over the next six to 18 months. And he'll let us show you the data so you understand what's going on and what you might start thinking about so that you can put something in place to make sure you're successful through this period. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is a game changer. So it differentiates, number one. And it also creates value at the same time. Mm-hmm. So it's super helpful for the client and they want more time with you to mo- get more understanding mm-hmm. so that they can make the good decision that they need to to fuel their business and to help them succeed. What I'm getting from you, regardless of what the person is bringing to the marketplace, is first leading with value. So you come to the table for your client and immediately bring value to the table, immediately helping them. And secondary, once they see your value, then they're like, okay, I, I want to continue to work with you. And you've automatically created a relationship where you're going to work together. Yeah. And you don't want to be a, a bad first date. You know, the, the bad first date sits <laughs> Get down married. and says, uh, uh, look, I'm super handsome. I'm rich. I have a big house. I drive a nice car. I can send your children to co-. And you're like, yeah. it's a first date. Like, we're not there yet. Uh, yeah. may- maybe be more interested in the other person and what they might need. Mm. And uh, and that is hard for some people because they're so, especially if they're amped up on their product and service, <laughs> and I get it because you're like, this will work for you and I know it will. Yeah, but you're way out ahead of them in that conversation. You have mm. to go slow and bring them up to that point where they understand that. And uh, I know as an entrepreneur, like you really, really want to get after it and make sure they understand this is going to work for them. Yeah. They need more time. Yeah, you know, I, I get that. And and plus, I, I found some of the ble- best places, like there's a um, mentor, business mentor I've listened to for years, about three or four years. My business mentor referred me to him and said, check out his content. It's amazing. And after years of, you know, watching his videos, going to a couple of his seminars, I finally hired him because, but you know, it took me years for to feel like, okay, I'm in the space right now where he's beneficial for me, but it wasn't day one. And he, he, puts out so much value on a day-to-day basis as far as his blog, his videos, that I get continual help. And I didn't put a penny on the table yet. But when I was ready, boom, he's the first guy I thought of when I, when it was time. Yeah, mm-hmm. it does. It, it, it sometimes takes time to work those things through, you know, mm-hmm. and especially, you know, your business better than anybody else does. Mm-hmm. And you know, when you're ready and yeah. when you can do this. And, you know, if you want to scale up the business and you start thinking about adding salespeople, you know, you have to have the right timing for that to, mm-hmm. to be able to give them the effort and the attention that they need to be successful in that role. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, and for me, what's come about is if something looks too good to be, it maybe is. Because I remember I was a couple of years in, there was this guy who came trying to sell himself to me. He said, oh, I worked in broadcasting forever. I'm amazing. Let me come work with you. And we'll, you know, because at that time, people were coming to me wanting to do ads for the show. And I was like, all right, all right, yeah, fine. You know, so I really didn't have a base number. I just kind of threw a number out there and said, yeah, it's this much. Yeah. And so I thought this guy will be the ticket to really launching it, building it and to more of an ad revenue, whatever. It turned out to be a big fiasco. He kind of helped tarnish the name a little bit. And uh, because he was, yeah, it wasn't a good idea. But um, it was one of the lessons I learned that, you know, I you just really have to know your own business and and go with your gut and not just go like, oh, someone's going to promise you the world. What's what's in it and uh, make sure it's just not too good to be true. That's all you get on LinkedIn every day is people that say I can get you new clients. 
Mm-hmm. Well, you're out here begging for me to be a new client. Like, mm-hmm. can't you get your own clients? Like, yeah. you, you need me? Why? Like, you should have a whole bunch. You must exactly. be good at it. Mm-hmm. And uh, the truth is, they're not very good at it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, to be careful when you're new in the in the arena. Now, let's say someone's getting started. They're brand new right out of the gate. They know nothing really about business or sales, and they have minimal skills. Where would you suggest they get started uh, in their business as far as getting good with this, getting good with sales, getting good with you know connecting with clients? There's a couple things I would recommend. Mm-hmm. If I was going to give somebody who's never sold one of my books, it would be the only sales guide you'll ever need. Ooh. It's It's a primer. It, it's absolutely just fundamentals the whole way through. And that that's a really good book for somebody mm. who's just getting into this. But the other thing that they could do is go into their community and find a, somebody who's got a really good salesperson and just ask to shadow them so you can understand mm. how do they talk? Yeah. What, what do they say when they're sitting in front of people? But make sure it's a really good salesperson. That is what we would call insight based. Like they know mm. way more than the client so they can teach the whole time. Mm -hmm. Uh, And if you find that person and you watch them, you'll understand why they win very quickly. Mm -hmm. You'll you'll see the person leaning into them because they're learning something and they're they're taking in new information that explains their world to them. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, it will go fast. But here's what I would tell you to do in trade. Mm -hmm. Tell the person, I'll write down all your questions and I'll write down all the client's questions and I'll write down the answers and I'll give them to you when we're done. If I can ask you some questions about why you asked it, what you asked Mm -hmm. and what you were hoping for, and that'll help speed it up really fast. Wow. I don't like people to take a long time to learn this, but if you watch somebody who's really good at it Mm -hmm. and you actually take notes of what's actually happening in that conversation, then review it, Mm. it speeds it up tremendously. Yeah. And you know what I'm getting, Anthony, is that if you go to the core of it, it's really about building relationships. Yeah. It isn't just about, oh, I'm just here to, you know, pretend build relationships, just give you a bit of information yeah. so I can get something from you. It's really a give and then eventually they'll give back to you. It's a give, give. Yeah. Yeah, it is give. And mm-hmm. and we we have a thing that we do in my business where we um we just say this is a a gift, like in mm-hmm. it's a nurture. We'll give it to you. We'll give you the insights. Mm-hmm. We'll sh- we'll give you our executive briefing. Even if you don't buy anything from us, we're fine. Mm -hmm. Like, we'll still give it to you. We still want you to get the information. And that generally has people come back to us when they are ready. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said about the mentor I ended up hooking up with, uh, when you give from that place of service and and gift, uh, people don't feel pushed. When they're ready, they'll come. And if they're never ready, if you're not a good fit, they'll refer maybe someone else that says, hey, I know this person didn't work for me, but I think they're awesome. Yeah, and then you get referrals, right. which are you know referral based are awesome because then it's genuine and people trust that more when someone is a friend or or, or a colleague or a family member says, "I know this product, service, or information is a jam." Uh, people trust that a lot more. They do, no doubt about it. There's nothing yeah. better than a referral, uh, especially mm-hmm. if they make a um, a very warm introduction for you and say, "Please." Mm-hmm. Uh, meet with me or meet with this person because uh, they've been great for me and you're going to enjoy it, number one, and they're going to be able to help you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I, we could go on a long time here, but I don't want anyone to leave without finding out more about you, getting a copy of all your books. How can they do that? The best place to go is thesalesblog.com. And mm-hmm. that's where I write and publish every single day. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you have questions about sales, you could, there's a search engine there. So you can just search for discovery call questions or Mm -hmm. how to overcome objections, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. The books are all on Amazon. um, And it's my last name. It'll be if you just search the last name, I-A-N-N-A-R-I-N-O, I'll be the only person there with books. Awesome. And if you happen to be watching today, it's right beneath you in the lower third. So I just have to thank you again, Anthony, for coming to share your great wisdom today. I know you helped a lot of business owners and new business owners get started to uh, do fabulous sales and help people out there. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me. You betcha. Like, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more savvy episodes and savvy biz tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com. 